This video features our CXED1079L BHMA Grade 1 rated ANSI strike, but the procedures we will demonstrate can be applied to any ANSI strike for cylindrical lock sets, including our 2079 Grade 2 strike, 1309 storefront strike, and 1410 fire rated ANSI strike. This video assumes you have selected the right strike for the door, frame, and lock set. If you want more information regarding strike selection, please download our selection guide from our website or go online to use our remarkable strike selection wizard. However, it's important to stress that a fire rated door identified by a stamp or a plate on the door frame will require a fire rated lock set and a fire rated strike. Even the best strike will not work if the door and frame are not aligned or the door sags on loose hinges. You will want to inspect each of these closely. More importantly, check the operation of the lock set, with particular attention to the operation of the deadlock pin of the latch. The 1079L is a universal strike with field selectable 12 or 24 volt power, fail safe, fail secure operation and has horizontal faceplate adjustment. Inside the package, you'll find the manual, a trim ring, which we'll show you later, and the strike body assembled with an ANSI square faceplate, and two additional faceplates for hollow metal doors and wood doors. The parts kit includes the fasteners and electrical connectors. Lastly, there are three self-adhesive paper templates. You will use these if the door frame has not been prepared with a latch plate cutout. Before beginning your installation, read the manual carefully. We've brought a lot of tools to this installation so that we can show you different ways to mark and cut the door frame to install the strike. Hand tools that you will need include a Phillips screwdriver, adjustable T-square, metal file, channel lock pliers, hacksaw with a new blade, painter's tape, thread taps, and of course, safety goggles. A professional installation always includes protecting the floor from dropped metal shavings and filings. We'll start by removing the latch plate. We're in luck because the opening in this frame does not have a dust box. If the opening has a dust box, you will need to use an oscillating power saw or a Dremel cutting wheel to cut across the two horizontal bends of the dust box to remove it. You can mark the door frame in many different ways. We will demonstrate two ways in this section. Starting with marking, using a Camden ANSI Strike Marking Template Kit. Select the template that matches your strike and mount it in the opening using the latch plate screws. Slide the angled shape piece to lay flat against the frame and tighten the two set screws. Mark the frame and you're done. Lastly, here's another tried and true method for marking that uses an adjustable T-square. Turn the strike on its side and adjust the T-square to be the depth of the strike. Then transfer the T-square to the door and mark with a pencil. Use tape to mark the cuts you will make and to protect the door frame during installation. There are also a number of ways that installers cut the frame after it's marked. We've brought drill bits and a power drill, as well as an oscillating power saw. But installers commonly use a power jigsaw or a Dremel cutting wheel. We'll be using a more manual and controlled technique for this installation. We start by using the metal hacksaw to cut the horizontal lines. It doesn't matter if they're not precise, the cut just needs to be inside the tape. Next, we will drill a series of vertical holes loosening the metal so you can use pliers to remove it. Lastly, a metal file is used to match the cut lines exactly. The strike has three adjustments, fail safe or fail secure operation, 12 or 24 volt power, and horizontal adjustment. Fail safe means that the setting will unlock the strike upon losing power, and a fail secure setting will lock the strike upon losing power. This strike is fail secure. To change it to fail safe, use the two small set screws on the back. The keeper will now open as a fail safe. 12 or 24 volt power is selected using the correct black connector cable. This strike draws 260 milliamps at 12 volts DC. We recommend that the strike be on its own power circuit. 
and that you install an MOV varistor to prevent damage to the strike by power spikes. Lastly, horizontal adjustment. This adjustment allows you to move the keeper closer or further away from the face of the latch. In this case, the dead pin of the latch is traveling into the cavity of the strike. This means that the door won't lock. Remove the strike, remove the faceplate, and loosen two screws to allow two parts of the strike to slide apart. Estimate the amount of movement you require and tighten the two set screws. Attach the faceplate and install the assembled strike in the frame. Now, the latch is positioned perfectly with the latch dead pin depressed by the strike keeper, allowing the door to lock. Start by connecting the power connectors. This installation has been pre-wired, but we want to check first to ensure the power is correct. We are not connecting the latch monitor wiring in this installation, but connecting the wiring is the same as connecting the power wiring. Install the strike into the frame. Be extremely careful not to cut or crush the wires. This is the most common damage that can occur during installation or service. We have a nice clean cut in our installation, but you may have a gap in the frame if you're replacing another brand of strike or your cut is too rough. This black trim ring will create a perfect edge around the strike. We can now test the door. We are controlling the strike with a prox reader and tag. It works perfectly, releasing the door with the latch dead pin pressed in by the strike keeper. To learn more about Camden locking products, please visit our website. We have a wide range of guides, videos, and online selection wizards.